Huddle time. Question number one. Share one experience that made you believe in Jesus' power. Well, my experience is one time I forgot my mask um, when going outside. I was with my family going to the hospital so that my mother can work. She noticed that I didn't have a mask. Luckily, my mother got one from the hospital. I was glad that Jesus spared me from get, getting the coronavirus that has been spreading all around the world. I have no experience that made me, that made me believe in Jesus' power, but I do believe that He is real. When I was in the hospital and I was sick, and then Jesus allowed me to come out feeling fine. One experience that made me believe in Jesus' power is the time when I was born. I was born premature, but through Jesus' power, I received, I received a miracle, and here I am now. Experience that made you believe in Jesus' power. When my classmates are not talking to me, I pray to Jesus and ask Him that He could please come to my classmates to be more friendly. And after I prayed, I waited for them to start talking to me. And after a while, they came up to me and asked me to help them with something. Sharing one experience that made you believe in Jesus' power by reading the Bible. Number two. How can you use your experience to make other people believe in Jesus? So that they can be spared from the virus um, while learning about Jesus more, especially little and old ones. I will let other people know that Jesus healed me while I was in the hospital and that Jesus is a healer. I will share the goodness and power of Jesus by telling others about my life story. How can you use your experience to make other people believe in Jesus? On my exam, I was thinking of my exam if I would pass it. So I decided to pray to Jesus and ask for guidance and help. And after I prayed and when I received the results, I've got a passing grade and from that day on, I kept praying and thanking God for everything He has done to help me. How can you use your experience to make other people believe in Jesus by sharing the gospel? Oh, oh, oh. 
December. But we are on the last week of our series, Not, Not things. things. We included this lesson as part of the series because it deals with the supernatural as well. We learned in the previous weeks about some objects in the Bible that seem to have power but is actually God who has the power. Yeah, and He just used those objects to show His love and point people to Him. So our lesson today is the opposite. We will look at powerful practice, but this is are not from God and actually lead people away from Him. Kids, do you know the word polarizing? Hmm, how about you, Teacher Mimi? Do you know the word polarizing? Yes, it means that opinions are sharply divided into opposing groups. For example, this is my rose. I love the smell of the rose. How about you, Teacher Glenn? No, sorry, Teacher Mimi, but I don't like it. Oh, no. Okay, but I love hiking. How about you? Do you want to hike with me? Oh, sorry, I don't like it. Okay, okay, kids. I found a list of polarizing foods on the internet. And let us see what Teacher Mimi and I Think about it. Just to let you know, most of these foods are actually very healthy and good for you. Here is the food. Liver. Chocolate cakes. Cheddar cheese. Papaya. 
Brussels sprouts Pickles Oyster Ampalaya or better melon Pizza We had pretty strong opinions about some of those foods and there were some that I really loved but teacher Mimi hated the taste and some of the foods also she likes it much but I don't like it but did you know kids that God also had some pretty strong opinions about certain things for most of which is sin and in today's lesson we will learn about some things that God hated. It is the things. Hey guys, come in! Mom just left the community service. We are so grateful that the rector didn't put mom in jail for seeing those precious objects. It is just by the grace of God that she isn't in jail. Yes, God really touched the director's heart. Anyway, we just dropped by to show you this amazing artifact. It's a centuries-old jack-o'-lantern. Legend has it that it used to belong to a druid who worshipped the Lord of Darkness or the Lord of Death, Samhain. We got it from Ireland where the celebration of Halloween started. People would carve out lanterns from turnips or pumpkins and put them outside their homes on October 31 to ward up evil spirits. They believed that on every October 31, evil spirits would roam the earth and could attack people. To avoid being attacked, people would wear scary costumes to trick the evil spirits that they were the same. Oh, so that's how we got the idea of trick-or-treating during Halloween. That's right, it was Halloween yesterday. Did you go out trick-or-treating, Rose? Um, no. I actually used to. But I was researching about Halloween last week and I read these articles online about Halloween being a special day for witches and devil worshippers. I couldn't believe it! So I checked for videos and I saw interviews of real witches and even the founder of the church Satan in the US saying that Halloween is a big celebration for them. It's like Christmas is for us Christians. Whoa, really? Yes, you can check it out yourself. Everything's on the internet now. But I'm not a witch or a devil worshipper. I don't believe in those things. So I guess it's fine to celebrate Halloween as long as you don't believe in it, right? Well, when you were sick, your mom searched for Bible artifacts that healed people. She was hoping that those objects had power and could make you well. But God meant those healings to point to Him. The power is with God. The objects merely point us to God. I guess it is true for objects or practices that are offensive to God. Since Halloween is a celebration of witches and demon worshippers, the objects associated with it, or even the activities, would also point people to darkness and supernatural things that are not of God. I guess this is not something we should be playing with, huh? Probably even things that we think are harmless, like Spirit of the Ball Pen or Tarot Cards to tell our fortune. You're right. God says in Deuteronomy 18 verses 10 to 12 CEV, Don't try to use any kind of magic or witchcraft to tell fortunes or to cast spells or to talk with spirits of the dead. The Lord is disgusted with anyone who does these things. Instead, the Bible encourages us in Philippians 4 verse 8, Finally, my friends, keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. Right! Let us do things that will glorify God and make us good examples as Christians. Next year, instead of trick-or-treating for Halloween, I'll raise a hallelujah! Let's have a worship night! Game! Game. The Israelites were about to enter the promised land, the land that God had promised to give them. 
that land was populated by wicked and evil people. God did not want the Israelites to become like that and draw far away from God. Through Moses, God warned the Israelites of the terrible practices of the people there and to steer clear of them. So kids, let's get our Bible and open it in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 9 to 13. Can we please read together? When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, don't learn to do the terrible things the people of the other nation they do. Don't sacrifice your sons or daughters in the fires on your altars. Don't try to learn what will happen in the future by talking to the fortune teller or by going to a magician, a witch, or a sorcerer. Don't let anyone try to put magic spells on the other people. Don't let any of your people become a medium or a wizard. And no one should try to talk with someone who has death. The Lord hates anyone who does these things. And because this other nation do these terrible things, the Lord your God will force them out of the land as you enter it. So we must, you must be faithful to the Lord your God and never doing anything he considers. That magic that is referred to in this scripture is a real magic. Not magic tricks that you see in the birthday parties or TV shows. We call that one illusion. Except for the human sacrifice, the evil practices that God warned the Israelites about are still very much alive today. There are even a lot of shows and games about them. These practices are called occult. And you know occult defined by the dictionary as relating to magic, astrology, or any system claiming use or knowledge of secret or supernatural powers. God didn't want the astrolite to practice them, and we will learn why later. But as much as this passage gives a stern warning, there are two lessons we can learn. Number one, rely on God's power. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 11, don't try to learn what will happen in the future by talking to a fortune teller or by going to a magician, a witch, or a sorcerer. Don't let anyone try to put magic spell on the other people. Don't let any of your people become a medium or a wizard. And no one should try to talk with someone who has death. God is the most powerful being in the universe. All other pale in comparison. He created everything just by speaking. He is all-knowing God. He is everywhere. He is all-powerful. Because we love and trust God. We rely on His power. Yet, some people practice the occult because they want power on their own terms. They are not willing to do it God's way. They want to be blessed. So they buy good luck charms and consult a sorcerer on how to attract prosperity. Or if they want to be friends with someone, they will have a witch cast a spell. Some want to know also what will happen in the future. They will consult on the youth fortune teller. You know, as a Christian, we can rely on God's power to bless us, to heal us, and to guide us we can rely on god's great plan and purpose for our lives i have here a flashlight i can turn it on and off and shine its light anywhere i want meanwhile there is the sun that lights up the whole planet it is so big and powerful and there is no way that i can control it in this illustration God is like the sun that is so powerful and bright. It brings light and life to the world. I cannot control 
it but I can tap onto some of its power like using a solar panel. Meanwhile, the occult is like a flashlight whose power is an attempt to copy the sun but is beauty compared to the sun yet I can control it any way I want. God has so much power. He actually let us tap into His power through the Holy Spirit. We can pray and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Through the Bible, God guide us in our decision. Prosperity, God actually delights on blessing to His people. And finally, we can rely on the Bible promises that God's working for the good of those who love Him and keep His command. Number two, be faithful to God. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 13, you must be faithful to the Lord your God and never doing anything He considers wrong. We worship God's alone and do not dabble in the things that are not of God. The power used in occult practices come from the devil. And there are many stories in the Bible that depict these things. In Acts chapter 13, Apostle Paul calls Elamas the sorcerer, a child of the devil. While in Philip, in, chap in Acts chapter 16, Paul cast out an evil spirit from a girl that enabled her to tell the future. These are just the two stories of many that prove the occult practices. Tap on the power from the devil. And when you align with the devil, hmm, you are breaking away from God. And you cannot belong to both. Check this out. This is a TV remote. And the TV remotes need two batteries, right? So if I take out one, it won't work. The two batteries is like our hearts. When we give our hearts to Jesus, we stay faithful to Him and Him alone. When we dabble in occult practices, we give part of our hearts to the things that God hates. When we do that, God is no longer our God because we are dividing our hearts and our faith doesn't work anymore. Just like this TV remote, when I remove one battery, either we belong to God hmm, or we belong to the devil. Speaking of a heart that is totally focused on God, do you know what a lot of people were celebrating uh, last month? It's Halloween. People dress up as a scary creatures like monster or witches. You know what, parents? Um, I know most of you already know this, but I just want to sh share this. If you check this one on the internet, you know Halloween is actually a special holiday for two religions, Wicca and the Church of Satan. So, how about the people who belongs to Church of God? So as people who love God, we have three options. One is to reject Halloween outright and going by what God commanded in our scriptures today. Another option is to go with the flow and celebrate Halloween and it's all commercialism, going trick or treating or each. Then the last option is to use Halloween as an opportunity for evangelism. Some people do this by inviting friends and family to their homes and celebrate the light that Jesus brought to the world instead of the darkness and fear being celebrated by others. And there are some families who share Jesus in a prayer along with the candy to treat and our treaters. So in our animated video today, Rose, Louis, and Billy decided to raise hallelujah and have a worship night so you know what kids you can ask god god's leading what your family can do for halloween next year so kids bye for now i know you enjoy our lesson for today 
Remember, we will rely on God's power and we will be faithful in God. And it will lead to our power truth that love what God loves and hate what God hates. And our power verse is Proverbs 14, 12. Some people think they are doing what's right, but what they are doing will really kill them. So, let's welcome Teacher Glenn again. Okay, thank you Teacher Mimi. Yeah, that is true that God was explicit in His instruction to the Israelites about the evil practices of the people in the promised land that they were not to emulate or imitate them. Because you know, since the first man, people have been doing things that are hateful to God. And God hates sin, but loves the sinner. That is why 2,000 years ago, He sent Jesus to die for our sins. And those who put their faith in Jesus are reconciled to God and also come to love what God loves and hate what God hates. We are likewise God's people, yet many of us think that those practices are harmless or just a joke. But God is clear that He hates those practices and check your beliefs and activities like toys, games, shows, and see if there is anything related to the occult and ask God what He is leading you to do. So, our questions, our challenging questions for today from the lessons are First, is there something in your life that you need God's power for? Again, is there something in your life that you need God's power for? And the second question is Are there things in your life you need to get rid of? in order to be faithful to God. Again, our second question is, are there something in your life you need to get rid of in order to be faithful to God? So kids, please answer the huddle question and send it to your teachers. Okay kids, bye for now and see you next time again. But before that, let me lead you to our prayer. Thank you, God, for the lessons that we have learned today. Indeed, Lord, you are so good in our lives. We thank you for your great love for us that 2,000 years ago you have sent your only begotten Son to die for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we ask for forgiveness that sometimes, Lord, we do things, we commit mistakes, we still keep doing things, Lord, the things that you hate but lord we ask you for we ask your forgiveness we ask your mercy for us i know lord that your mercy is renewed every day for us lord help us to be reminded of how good you are and how faithful you are in our lives and help us to rely more on you more of your power and help us to put our faith and trust to you alone not on the things that we can see here on earth. Lord, I pray that you continually help us, continually lead us in the way, in, the, in according to your will. And Lord, help us to worship you. Help us to know you more so that we will be able, Lord, to worship you in spirit and truth. Help us to be, to be mindful of the things, to be mindful of the things that we do in our lives and help us to fix our eyes on you and we thank you for for always guiding us we thank you for always available for us that in our weaknesses your grace is sufficient enough lord god uh, i just want to pray that you continually use us and even these little children continually to to reveal to them and teach them the things, Lord, that, that is prepared for them, the things that you have purposed them, the things that you have planned for them in according to your way, in according to your will. I just want to 
we just want to glorify you, Lord. We just want to thank you. We just want to give you all the glory and adorations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.